you have a really hard time figuring out how to use the controllers in the Unity scene? You are not alone. I will show you how to set up everything and work around some annoying bugs. We start off by using the sample scene from our last tutorial. First we want to fix a small problem with our player controller, which prevents us from getting close enough to objects to grab them. To change this, we can decrease the radius of the collider on our character controller. Now we are not as fat as before. To make the scene a little bit more interesting and contrasty, we are going to change some colors. We can use the vertex painter of the Pro Builder tool to do exactly that. Just select an object and apply a color from the default color palette. To change the overall lighting of the scene, I will use another skybox provided by the Oculus package. Now this looks a little bit better in my opinion. Now to add the possibility to interact with things, there are multiple options we can choose from. If you take a look at the avatar grab sample from the Oculus package, there are some prefabs we can use. For example, the local avatar with grab prefab is a predefined game object with an OVR camera rig attached to it. It also comes with two other prefabs, the avatar grabber left and the avatar grabber right prefab. It mainly consists of two components, a rigid body and an OVR grabber. Both prefabs for the left and the right hand are basically the same, just with one important difference we will talk about in a second. Inside there are two game objects with colliders on them to detect the interaction with other objects. The important part here is that the colliders are just functioning as a trigger, so the isTrigger property is set to true. It's also important to mention that the rigid body should not be affected by gravity. The two game objects are referenced in the grab volumes list. The grip transform object is used as a reference to apply any transformation to the object in your hand. The most important property is the controller property. For the right hand use right touch and for the left hand use left touch. Now we can disable our previous player controller and see the results. You can't move anymore because the prefab just has a camera rig attached to and you can't grab anything yet. We will change this in a second. The next thing we have to do is make our cube grabbable. To do this we first need to add a box collider to it. Make sure that the collider fits your object. You can double check the collider by clicking the edit collider button and then you can see a green outline indicating the boundaries of your collider box. The next component we have to add is a rigid body. Just use the default values here and don't touch anything. Now we can add the actual grabbable script from the Oculus package. If we now hit build and run, we can finally grab our cube and its position and rotation is attached to our hand movements. But there's one big downside with the solution. The main purpose of this prefab is for stationary use, so we can't move around in the scene. To have the full flexibility, we will add the grabber to our existing player controller. The problem is that we can't use the grabber left and grabber right prefab in our player controller because for whatever reason it doesn't work. I haven't yet figured out why it's not working, but it doesn't matter if you put it on the tracking space, on the camera rig or on the player controller level. It just don't work in play mode. But we can do it manually. The hand anchor game objects already have a rigid body attached to it so that we can directly add the grabber component. First define the correct controller. Do the same thing for the other hand accordingly. Now we can add the collider. In my case I'm choosing just one sphere collider. The sphere is very big by default but we can change the radius to something smaller. Now we have to add the collider to the grab volumes list. Just drag and drop the sphere collider to this new input field. And make sure to add the hand anchor game object as a grip transform object. 
do the same things for the other hand. If you run the game, you probably will notice that you can somehow interact with the cube, but it's not like it's meant to be. This one is easy to fix. We just forgot to set the is trigger on the sphere colliders to true. Another thing you may want to change is set the kinematic property on the rigid bodies. After this, it should work with our player controller so that we can grab the cube in the world and throw it around. Unfortunately, I noticed some weird issues. For example, if you move the cube near to you, it could shoot you in the air or it can push you back so that you are falling off the platform. I'm not 100% sure why it behaves like this from time to time, but I found a way around it. The first thing we can do is create a separate game object for the collider and not put it on the hand anchor game object directly. The easiest way to do this is to create a sphere game object and then remove the mesh filter and the mesh renderer. Make sure to change the radius of the collider to something smaller than default value. And don't forget to check the is trigger checkbox. Back to the hand anchor game object, we now have to drag and drop our new sphere into the grab volumes list and delete the sphere collider component. That fixed the push back bug for me. But the other bug still remains. To fix this one, I had to enable the parent held object mode on both game objects. Finally, it should work with no weird bugs and positioning issues. The last thing I want to do is to make the scene more fun by adding more cubes to it. Now we can really start playing around with it and have some fun with physics.